Hi, I'm Electra Porzel. I'm the director of the Language of Consciousness Institute. And tonight I just finished meeting with um, a discussion group about one set of Charles Einstein's next old stories and new stories. And it got a lot of great discussion. Um, I hope you're using some of this for your own thinking or talking with others. But the old story was that, and the old story really just means how the truth um, or the norms that society had established that kind of ran how we see the world. Mind was superior to emotion. That's for sure. You see that through all of the rational mind is the most important. Emotion doesn't give you any information. It can't be trusted. Spirit is superior to flesh. We had a lot of discussion around that saying, well, spirit wasn't really held very highly as an informative to the everyday life, but it certainly was higher than flesh, which was considered. Anybody had anything to do with the treatment of the body. What well, is not highly valued, valued by the whole society. Um, high is better than low. Yeah, we always look, God is up there. Bosses are better, you know, that whole crap. And then God is in the sky. And for sure, we didn't put God as part of us. Uh, as part of the way that we are with each other and with people, which is what indigenous groups do. So we had, <clears throat> we separated spirit from body. We separated body from mind. And it makes it very difficult to function with the wholeness of what a human being's possibility is. That's my statement. Okay. So the new story that um, I, Eisenstein proposed was this. High and low, spirit and flesh, sky and soil, mind and emotion are all integral, necessary, and co-equal notes in the symphony of being. So this is, um, what we know is that this earth is a dualistic environment, right? But that doesn't mean that the dualism, the, the differences, male, female, air, fire, however you want to do the dualisms, do not have to be polarized. And we have made the mistake of, well, when we, I think we were, I don't know how it happened, but humanity lost its original sense of balance and being one with all nature and with earth and each other. And you can trace to indigenous groups now that they somehow held on to that, that oneness with nature, with, with, land with each other in a way that we didn't in Western society. We got separated from it. And we call it a reality of separation, therefore, because we don't feel connected to the land that we live on, to the trees, to the plants, to the animals. There is no visceral kinesthetic understanding. Now, what we've seen rising is people who are paying more attention to this relationship with they, some people call it the three mother worlds, you know, um, the plant world, the, the beings of the plant world, the divas and things like that, the fairies. So there's, there's a, a richness that's possible for human beings to have in their lives that we've been cut off for. And there's no longer we feel I'm all by myself. There's no one to help me because we have been taught not to pay attention to them, not to pay attention to our bodies, not to pay attention to the, the, what the air is telling us, what the water is telling us, what our plants are telling us, what our animals are telling us, what our body is telling us. And that makes it very, very isolated for the human spirit. How do we help? ourselves and others move from this isolated, I'm all by myself, there's nothing else here, just help me, to little bit by little bit expanding their experience of this world as an interconnected, interrelated, interdependent whole. So that when we start receiving, thinking we're hearing something from the tree in our front yard or the stone circle or, um, the way events appear, 
when we start seeing the evidence of this interrelationship interconnectedness, our comprehension of how big the world is for us, with us, grows. And that's what we have to do. So some people mentioned books, some people mentioned shows that they'd seen. We talked about our experiences recently that have given us a larger sense of how we're interconnected. We recently had a group go on a spiritual journey to Scotland, Ireland, and England. And we had created what we call tethers, which means that it's simply people here in the United States who say, on this date, at this time in that area, I know you're going to be here and I'm going to hold you. So first of all, you have to have a belief that there's energy connecting all of us and that you have the possibility of affecting the energy of what is occurring around somebody else or someplace. And what happened was, is that we did. I had the experience of being with them. I also have the experience of things shifting in my own world. And when I see that shifting and I experience something I shouldn't be able to experience by all rational, then I know that there's more. That the world is more than this singular, physical, got to get the job done well, now you're retired, so now you're useless kind of world. I'm a retired person, retired from one kind of work, not from the other. But I don't get paid by someone anymore, which makes me of less value. And I understand society thinks that. That doesn't make it okay. But my job is to keep expanding my ability to know more of how the, of what exists here on Earth, which is both all the, the dualities that exist, spirit and flesh, mind and matter, chemical, biochemical, alchemical. And find myself moving through those interrelationships, allowing myself to be present to doing the dishes as well as being one in with creation and meditation or in working with other people. That's what each of us can do. And as if each of us takes on that personal expansion, personal deepening of interrelationships with nature, with land, with each other, and with the, the larger forces that exist, the other dimensions, then the sensing that you have or that I have, it's, it moves, it's dynamic. And we are held by what creation, I'll call it creation. You can call it God, God is great spirit, Allah, but we are held. Nature holds us. Mother Earth holds us. All these dimensional forces hold us. And all we have to do is start expanding our perception of all that is there, all that we're interconnected to. And gee, that's a lot to come from one conversation, right? But it's a culmination. One of the gals was talking about that she was having to clean her house like she did before she would have babies. It's that nesting. It's clearing out to make way for the new. And we all have some level of that, of let me open up spaces within myself, spaces in my field, even physically like she is in her home, so that the new can arrive. The other energies can come in and make their home with us and us get to know them. We know this is a dynamic time. I would say pay attention to what you're experiencing. Make room for that which is new. Use the observing and observing being templates from the language of creation to help you move out of looping thoughts or negative thoughts so that you can come to a craving. So if you write the creation exercises, you use the observing templates to notice what is occurring and paying attention to it and getting yourself out of difficult loops. You use the craving templates to define for yourself what it is that you crave to have and be in the world and do. And in the craving, you access not only your own deepest wisdom, but you access the wisdom of creation, God, goddess, great spirit. 
And when you're in the dynamic flow of that, miracles do occur. The paradise that you've been seeking starts to open up to you. And you walk into the new story of spirit and flesh, sky and soil, mind and emotion are all integral, necessary, and equal notes in the symphony of being. Thank you very much for listening to my story tonight. Pay attention, listen, observe, and know that there's so much more for you as a human being on this planet. And if you want to join me in my next conversation, where we talk, take up yet another of Einstein's stories, which is next Thursday, July 6th at 5.30 Pacific, go to our website, www.loc-institute.com and um, register for the event. Thank you. Bye-bye.